Good afternoon. Welcome to Afternoons with Ed. Here's your host, Ed King. Hi. Well, it's a very beautiful day out today. It's wonderful to live in Florida. Uh, I hate to be up back up north where I hail from in Ohio and be facing all that nasty weather up there. I'm glad to be down here. You're going to have to excuse me a little bit of looking away from the camera today because I've got some notes here that I want to refer to and uh, talk about a number of things. First thing I think I'm going to get into, which is not the first thing in, uh, in my notes, but it is, uh, I watched the uh, presidential inaugural uh, uh, speech last week. Uh, incidentally, uh, it, it kind of overshadowed the, the inauguration, kind of overshadowed the uh, my birthday and Martin Luther King's, which was uh, birthdays, was the twentieth of January. We share the birthdays, and and so, uh, but I had I had a good birthday, and some people had a little celebration for me. And uh, you're looking at a ninety-one year old geezer here, folks. Ninety-one, count them. <laughs> and here I am, and still going uh, somewhat stronger, strongly, but not as strong as I used to be. Now, I want to talk about the presidential thing. Uh, this hit, hit home very, very much to me because uh, several things happened. One is he laid the agenda out there, uh, no more shilly-shallying, being nice, Mr. Nice Guy with the, with the reluctant uh, Congress, uh, the House of Representatives, uh, people who are only out to uh, get their, uh, do their own agenda and, and do everything they can to block things and make things worse. They don't realize that we're all in this, uh, together in this country, each one of us, and that includes all those goofy guys like Ron Johnson from Wisconsin and... Uh, I can't think of the goose name from uh, uh, Tennessee, and then uh, and then you then you have uh, Ron Paul uh, from Arizona, <laughs> uh, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about that because I also going to talk about Hillary's uh, appearance before uh, the congressional committees. The uh, the thing is that we don't live in an agrarian society anymore, and things have changed a lot in this country. Uh, we we don't. Uh, we're not uh, it's strictly a manufacturing com country anymore. We're a service country. Uh, we don't produce anything. So we got a whole different set of circumstances. People like myself, uh, who was, uh, I'll use this term rather loosely, an entrepreneur, a person who did, did their own thing in business, uh, had small businesses. Uh, I, I saved and scrimped and saved money for my old age. I thought uh, surely I would have enough uh, because I, I did not uh, squander money when I had it. Uh, I saved it. Uh, I didn't counter that one thing I did not expect to have happen was uh, terrible medical expenses. Uh, we need help from the cradle to the grave. There's no two ways about it. Let's face it, this is a different world than it used to be. This is not a, a family subsistent world. But even then, if people think of the good old days, read Charles, Dix, Charles Dickens, read Oliver Twist, read uh, Nicholas Nickleby, read, read uh, uh, David Copperfield. See how children were, were treated in those days. And I've talked about this before, and not just in England. Uh, in New York City, I recall reading somewhere in the past that there were hordes of, of y young people, young boys in their early teens uh, and sub-teens uh, roaming the streets of New York. Uh, they had no place to go. That's not taking care of our fellow men, and I believe that's what we're supposed to do. So I'm at, I guess I'm in a preachy mood today, but that's okay. I want to uh, talk a bit, little bit about uh, Hillary Clinton's thing, too. Uh, I uh, I watched that, and uh, the woman has more stamina than I than I than I have. I I don't know how she w withstood that because she did two hours in the morning with Senate and three hours in the afternoon with the House of Representatives, and some of the people at the House of Representatives got downright nasty, and this woman with such a plum and such poise handled these these midgets. Uh, it was it was truly a, an amazing performance, and you know, folks, 
if all goes well, uh, you're looking at your next president there in Hillary Clinton. And what strides we've made, we've got a black president or a Negro president or African-American president or whatever the proper term is today. I use all of those with respect. Uh, you know, there's, it's something I come across that, that I think is, is kind of weird. There's some language in the Constitution that's never been abolished. I was watching on a, a, a two-part series on uh, WEDU, on uh, public broadcasting, uh, about the uh, emancipation uh, uh, movement, the, abol uh, the <laughs> abolishment of, of slavery movement which started in 1830 by a man by the name of Garrison. He, he published a newspaper, and he was later joined by uh, Douglas Frederick, uh, Frederick Douglass. Uh, Frederick Douglass was a uh, runaway slave who became quite famous, and, for, and uh, I'm going to read his book. Uh, uh, I have never read his book, but uh, this is Douglass's book. It, it tells about coming up. And the, and the things, and, and the... Uh, one of the biggest things that happened, of course, was Harry Beecher Stowe's uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and uh, it made people aware of things. It also made me completely aware of the fact that, <coughs> excuse me, it made me completely aware of the fact that the Civil War was about one thing. It was about the abolishment of slavery. Uh, you know, in the, in the Constitution, uh, it delineates, uh, I can't tell you the section or anything because I'm not that familiar with it, but there is a point where it, it talks about the, the, the Freemans. Uh, they were referred to as Freemans, uh, and I don't know if that's terms used in the Constitution or not. I forget, having read that only recently, this one paragraph, uh, become, I just become aware of it, that... Um, and then they tell about what the Indians' rights are, and then they talk about the others who they count as three-fifths of a man. Well, you know who the others were. They were the black slaves. Uh, that has never been <laughs> lifted from the Constitution. The Emancipation Proclamation was just that, and, of course, the 13th Amendment is the one that uh, was supposed to address the problem and, and uh, eliminate slavery, but, of course... We all know what happened with the Reconstruction. It was a mess, and and uh, we didn't learn anything from that because we went and repeated our mistakes after World War One. I've talked about that in the past. Uh, on a, getting a, a less serious and a lighter note, uh, I was uh, thinking about uh, authors that... Uh, were very popular back in the 30s and 40s. There was one chap by the name of Louis Bromfield. Uh, he was a very prolific writer. He was probably the most pro uh, popular writer of his day, just like uh, Grisham is today. Uh, maybe even more so because he churned out more books, I think. At any rate, um, he was living in France as an expatriate. He, he, he did... Uh, <laughs> He'd gone to uh, Cornell University for a couple of years and studied uh, agronomy there. He was, he was going to be a farmer, but it turned out he was a writer. And he lived in, with a, a wealthy wa uh, wife uh, in France until the war uh, w was looming. And then he moved back to Ohio. And he built a place uh, just outside of uh, Marion, uh, not Marion, but Mansfield, Ohio, and he called it Malabar Farms because it reminded him of the Malabar region in India where he'd spent a great deal of time. Uh, the, uh, one of the th ones that comes to mind of his books, uh, it was The Rains Came, it was made in, into a movie, uh, a big-time movie also. But uh, <clears throat> he built this, uh, this fantastic house there, uh, and he called it Malabar Farms. Uh, one of the things that happened there in 1945 uh, Loren Bacall and Humphrey Bogart, I hope you all know who they were, uh, big famous movie actors and actress, uh, were married there in the uh, garden at uh, Malabar Farms. I, uh, I loved the place. It was open to the public, and I was, I, it wasn't all that far a drive from uh, Columbus, Ohio. It was about halfway to Cleveland, and uh, maybe 70, 75 miles. 
So I was up there on three different occasions and went through the house. I got to the point where I could, could uh, catch mistakes that the uh, uh, people, uh, the guides were, were making about it. But it was a fascinating place. Uh, however, uh, he uh, unfortunately drank himself to death. He died in uh, University Hospital in Columbus at the age of 61 or 62 from uh, liver failure. So uh, it's it's amazing. Uh, I I've l looked into the uh, lives of these authors like Hemingway and Scott Fitzgerald. The interesting part of it is, and, and there I'm using that favorite phrase of mine. The interesting part of it is that uh, these people never tried to mix drinking and writing. They would be stone cold sober when they wrote, and I, th I think it's amazing. I have also been uh, several times to uh, Hemingway's place in Key West, and I wanted to talk a little bit about Key West. Uh, I, I was there in uh, 1975 and 1976, and uh, it was uh, known as being a gay community at that time. It was a very quiet, laid-back place. There was very little doing. Uh, the big hotel on Laval, uh, Duval Street, the uh, main drag, uh, w was completely closed up, boarded up. Uh, there was very little business there, but uh, there were some fantastic restaurants. Uh, my wife and I, uh, this, uh, I think it was in 76 that we were there, and, and, and we went to this little restaurant on Duval Street, as I recall it was. It's not, the building's no longer there because I've been back since. And uh, the guy comes up, and we're seated on a porch. Of course, the weather's nice. And the uh, guy comes over, he says, say, I was out to shrimp boats this morning. He said, I got the most fantastic shrimp you ever see. And so we had some shrimp to start with, and boy, he didn't exaggerate. They were gorgeous, and you know, fresh off the boat. Uh, there were quaint places like that there, and you could walk around, and it was quiet. And nobody was hawking uh, timeshares and stuff like that. And I just heard from my friend Penny. She's <laughs> got, getting excited about something. Cutest little dog you ever see. Anyway, uh, <laughs> noisy, huh? Uh, I went back a few years ago, back to Key West, uh, and uh, I was terribly disappointed because uh, they were at that time, and probably still are, uh, dumping two cruise ships a day off there. And of course, the, the uh, island was swarming with, with tourists. Uh, the, most of the quaintness was gone, and, and uh, uh, it was no longer a gay community. It was a, it was a commercial uh, tourist trap type of place. Uh, I was, uh, uh, my wife was sh shopping on, in a dress shop in Duval Street, and I was across the street because I didn't want to go in the dress shop. And, and uh, I was talking to a young lady who had, a, I think she sold some sort of bracelets there. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a slight cold, so I'm going to be hacking at you today. But it uh, uh, turns out that uh, she and her husband uh, were both uh, natives of Key West, as were both of the, their parents. And so, uh, and I said, well, gee, I said, I, I bet you really like it now that you have all these tours here to, for your business. She said, no. She said, I'd rather have less business than have it be back the old way, the way it used to be. Uh, I don't know why I got my reading glasses on, but I, I guess I'm not reading. But, uh, it, it, uh, it, 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 the place was spoiled for me, and, and, and I, I don't think I, I will ever go back. Hemingway's house is an amazing place. It's built of stone. Uh, he didn't build it. It was an old, old, old building. It, it, it made of stone. And the stone was quarried right there underneath it. And where, where the stone was quarried out, they actually have a basement there. Uh, no, nobody else would have one because the, you know, quarrying the rock out is a, a big, big job. House was pretty interesting, and uh, it's no, known for its cat population. It has all these cats, uh, and they're known for being different because they have uh, six toes instead of five on the front claws. Uh, 
they're just running everywhere. There's a cat cemetery. There's all, all sorts of things. Um, there's a place there in, in, uh, in Key West called uh, Sloppy Joe's. It's supposed to have been uh, uh, Hemingway's hangout. I'm told that this is not true, that the, in the, in somebody that knew something this was years ago when I was there uh, told me that it was this little bar off the main drag, uh, just a little kind of dinky little uh, neighborhood type of bar where you're staying out. <clears throat> one of the stories about Hemingway is that one night he was coming home from the taverns, his adventures into the taverns, and he's kind of three sheets to the wind. And they were doing some remodeling, and they had one of these old-fashioned urinals, you know, this stand-up, and it's a stand-up thing. And so he drags it home. Now, he must have been strong because those things are heavy. But anyway, he dragged it home somehow, and he laid it down flat and made it as a drinking fountain for his cats, and it's still there to this day. <laughs> well, uh, I was thinking about uh, uh, some of the travels I've done and the things that, 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 that I found interesting. I was, when I was talking about Malabar Farms, I was reminding of some other things in Ohio that were of interest. Uh, outside of a little town called uh, West Liberty, Ohio, it's sort of, oh, central uh, west, uh, central uh, east, it's uh, <laughs> west of Columbus, Ohio, and just slightly north of that area. But anyway... There are two, what they call the Piat Castles there. And uh, they're still owned uh, owned by the family, or, or was to, to the last of my knowledge anyway. These were built out in the wilderness, uh, complete wilderness. And they brought in artisans to uh, do some of the work in these places. Now, they're not true castles. They're just big, big uh, Victorian-era houses. Although the one, uh, the one uh, castle... Uh, the oldest of the two, they have strange names, so it's, it's escaping me right now. But <clears throat> the, uh, this this one was built on the uh, French style, and uh, at the time that these type of were, uh, buildings were built, these uh, houses were built in in uh, France. They were taxed by the number of windows they had, so the way they got around it as much as possible was they used a lot of mirrors. And they would have a, 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 a window situation, so it would catch a lot of sunlight, and then it would go in and be bounced off several mirrors inside, uh, which made the rooms uh, fairly bright and cheery. Uh, that uh, one was not, uh, but partially furnished, as I recall. It's been a long time since it's been there. But the other one it was more Victorian style, uh, there's uh, two brothers that had uh, built these places, and uh, the library. They had libraries and and uh, uh, all sorts of uh, kind of frou frou things. They, the um, ceiling of the library, there are uh, like uh, oblong panels up there, and it's uh, kind of a domed ceiling, as I recall. And they have famous people's pictures painted in there. And there. This was done by an artist and was brought over from. Uh, Europe. Uh, a lot of the stuff that's uh, the work that was done on these buildings was people that are imported from Europe. Now you, you've got to remember there was no public transportation. There wasn't even railroads into that area at that time. They were completely isolated. Would have to come by horse and carriage. Anything that was brought in there. <coughs> Again, excuse me. But the uh, the one uh, the the. One of the things also in this other one I'm talking about is that the uh, there is a a bathroom on the second floor, and it has running water. What they did is they pumped the water up into a reservoir up in the attic, and of course it was a gravity flow from there on. But they had a flush toilet, and they used to have a bidet. Uh, both of these were encased in wood and, and with some kind of a porcelain type lining on them. But uh, also, in those days, when you had guests, uh, they had to have not only a bedroom, but they had to have a sitting room. 
So in order to cut down on the space here, and uh, I think I'm getting into a very boring subject here, but I'll finish it. The, uh, uh, they made the, uh, put the bed in like a little alcove with curtains that drew, and that uh, comprised the bedroom, and then of course the rest of the room was the sitting room. And they also had extensive rooms they called box rooms, which we would call storage rooms, where the stuff was stored, the, the people's luggage and whatever that were traveling through. Uh, and lots of, I understand there's a, a large cave in that area, and I never visited that. But there are a lot of things around the United States that are really worth worth visiting. Uh, uh, I, I, I wish I had... Uh, more years to go to, to uh, and, and you know, be physically able to travel a lot, and and, and also ha have the money to do it. I was talking earlier <clears throat> about the the problem with uh, uh, finances, and I had mentioned in a previous show that uh, Rick Steve, one of Rick Steve's shows, he was um, travels in Europe. He was he was interviewing this couple in one of the Scandinavian countries, and I don't remember which one it was. But he was interviewing them, <clears throat> and uh, they have cradle to grave. In other words, uh, their their uh, health stuff is all taken care of, a hundred percent. You know, there's no copay, there's no nothing. The government takes care of your your health needs uh, throughout your lifetime. It also <clears throat> regardless of anything, it provides you with a, an adequate income to live on in your retirement. And as these uh, people, these Scandinavian people pointed out, this is, eliminates the two bad things that we have to worry about. And again, I'm going back to my own case because it, it's last year, and I think I said this earlier, but I'm going to say it again, uh, we had uh, out-of-pocket expenditures of over $12,000. That is the difference between a, being able to live and not live. Uh, without that, uh, the fact that I had extensive savings and used to earn some interest on them, but no longer do because of the recession that we had a short while back, <clears throat> uh, it, it, that's the, the difference between me and, and uh, getting along. Now, we got enough money to last one more year, and then it's it. And then I don't know what I'm going to do because uh, my uh, wife and uh, my Social Security benefits uh, exceed uh, poverty levels, so we can't get on Medicaid. So we're making uh, st strides in the right direction, I think, with uh, the so-called Obamacare. I, uh, they interviewed some people. They were said they were against it and. They ask him, uh, well, would you like to have this benefit? And the answer to all the questions they asked him was yes. Uh, so they really liked it, but they just decided they didn't like it because it's the thing, thing to do. <clears throat> I think, though, that, uh, that I think the thing has turned. Turn, um, something interesting I saw recently, they were comparing uh, Ronald Reagan's uh, presidency with Obama's. Because uh, Reagan, you know, he he went uh, very far right and and gave the country what they wanted at that time. The people of the country wanted to go far right, and they did. But uh, this time they gone too far, and and uh, we're going to, I think, do uh, a much more, uh, pardon the expression, socialistic type of government, uh, which in my true socialism wouldn't work. I I know that. But uh, taking care of one another, it, 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 it should be paramount. Uh, taking care of it, uh, it can no longer be put in the hands of the churches because they're in building programs, and I've talked about that in the past and been critical of it. But uh, trying to find something here in my notes that may be, um, would um, be of, of more interest. Uh, oh, I... You know, it's 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 sad sometimes. You go to a place and, like, uh, I went to, we went to uh, Jamaica in 1967, and it was delightful there because there were natives there uh, selling their wares. Uh, 
uh, we went back in 74, an ill-advised trip because my wife was dying of cancer at the time, but it had been suggested that we take a trip. <clears throat> well, when somebody's in bad shape as she was, that was not a good idea. But the, the country had changed in seven years. They were having a, a little revolutionary outbreaks there. And as they said, there were bad boys out. So they warned us about going out at night. But uh, in the meantime, uh, Indian merchants had come in and uh, from India, and uh, they were selling uh, a bunch of slack that was imported from somewhere uh, and wasn't the, native, the good native goods anymore. I was amazed at the cleanliness of the people in that country. Uh, it was truly amazing. Uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, there, and uh, uh, we stayed at a wonderful hotel, and I can't think of the name of it. it was right on the on the bay, and we uh, could almost uh, spit from our balcony that was part of our suite uh, into the into the water. Uh, <laughs> I've been uh, watching uh, some. Uh, stuff on uh, WDO, so about uh, Danton Abbey, as I've talked about, I think, last week a little bit. Uh, I've been to England uh, twice. I uh, enjoyed the trip there. First time we went, uh, we went with another couple, and we went to a uh, conference uh, at Brighton, England, on uh, drug and alcohol abuse, because my wife was, uh, and the other fellow that went to uh, were involved in uh, running treatment programs at the time, so they had a you know, you know that their uh, trip was a write off, but uh, his wife and my and mine wasn't a write off. But we took three extra weeks afterwards. We had an open ticket, and airplane ticket, and we toured there. And of course, these people were big on castles and palaces more than I would like to. I'd like to have seen some other things. Second time we went on a bus trip, which was not a good idea. Uh, the re reason we did that is because uh, over, I was over 70 and I couldn't rent a car. They won't rent a car to somebody over 70. <coughs> One of the interesting things about the uh, uh, English uh, hotels, uh, ones in London seem to be run by uh, uh, supercilious French people. Uh, all of the uh, hotels have these huge bathtubs. They're a chore to climb in and out of. Uh, I don't know why, but they they have these uh, really really antique bathtubs in 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 the in the newest uh, hotels. Well, uh, I was talking about uh, you know my travels here, there, and everywhere. Uh, People say, uh, one, uh, so one of the things people say, you know, talking about the social welfare thing, uh, well, if I had taken my Social Security money and put it in some other kind of investment, I'd be a lot better off. I agree with you. You would. But you would not. For a good many years, I was involved in the insurance industry, and I found out one thing in counseling a lot of people and the insurance needs is that when they reached up into their 40s, they had the only savings they had, the only savings they had, was the equity in their home and the cash value of their life insurance. I know that if I, if it had been up to me to save the money that I put into Social Security, I would not have done it. I would have spent most of it as I went along because you could always find a need for stuff, whether you need it or not. Well, so... Some of this today has been kind of gloomy, I guess. But I got to say a lot of things today that I wanted to say. Uh, as you probably uh, figured out, I'm kind of a guy that leans a little to the left. But I like to consider myself a financial conservative and a social liberal. I think that the two go hand in hand. I think there's no reason why they can't work beautifully together. I believe that uh, I'm just about out of time. Uh, I hope that there was some things of interest I said today. 
if there's any comments and you want to get them back to me, uh, you know how to do it. And uh, by contacting uh, SBN. And uh, I'd like to hear, hear from, uh, comments back and, and tell me what you